Hello, Augusta. Hello, Mike. Delighted to be chatting with you both. How are you? Hi, Terry. Pretty good. Good, good. How's life in Hertfordshire? And is it Milton Keynes? Milton Keynes, yeah. Well, it's been a glorious sunny day here and I've had a, a really nice walk. So I'm topping my day off by talking to you. So um, definitely Excellent. a good day. Did you find someone to walk with then, Augusta? I did. I did. <laughs> my friend was free. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so I've pruned a vine, mowed the lawn yeah. and put another coat of paint on the children's playhouse. So I'm feeling very virtuous. Are you busy? <laughs> you, you've, got, you've got 12 grandkids, haven't you, Mike? So we have got 12 grandchildren and three of them are next door. Yeah, wow, you've got your hands full there. Well, I've got five, <laughs> and that, that's plenty. <laughs> it's very neat. We have four children. They have three children each. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> three times table. Okay, yeah. Can I ask, how, how did you two get together? Who, who made the first moves? Was it, Have you known each other for a long time? Uh, two months. I was it getting close to three. Um, so yeah. we have a mutual friend called John Asher, uh, who sang on um, the Brexit musical, uh, played very many parts, Brexit's musical trick. So I knew, knew John, and he happened to share one of Augusta's songs. And when I saw that, I thought, how have I not met this genius lady before? <laughs> um, so, you know, I uh, watched a couple of her videos, thought they were brilliant. Um, and then um, I made the first move. And I said, uh, you know, I know you've got all these songs on Twitter, but... Uh, I have an idea which could give them a wider coverage. And she said, do tell. So I said, um, what about a joint book? Yeah. And, and it all um, happened a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah. This is the book with the cover behind me. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Uh, that's, that's right. So that, um, you know, a lot of it existed um, in my writings and, you know, my, my satire and Augusta's satire mm. as of the point that we uh first encountered each other so it was it was july wasn't it augusta so it's three months by now yeah. um we got to kind of publishing the book in two months um and uh so we uh we looked at what we got uh we put it together uh organized it by uh in chapters by kind of it was organized by scandal so you know <laughs> one for crony contracts one for party gate and uh, one for brexit mess and so on um and uh uh, and and then partway through the process, um, I actually uh, I was chatting to a friend, and I said, you know, here's a book with um, uh, you know 140 sketches, and there's 100 videos that go with it. And he said, well, how are you going to have 100 videos in the book? And we um, came up on this idea of sticking QR codes in the book so that you can scan it with your phone and go straight to a video where they exist. And and we've got more than 100 videos. I've never seen anything like that. I have a brief look at the books today. I've never seen this before. Yeah, well, it, yeah. it makes the, you know, the satire that much more immediate. Yeah. So yeah. you can, uh, I don't know if we can get up there, I don't know which, which is this one. Yeah. Uh, here we are. Uh, okay, so I opened it randomly. Yeah. This one is uh, a poem by me. Yeah. The shit hits the fans. Yeah. Um, and, uh, oh, World King Boris and the Quest for the Sacred Benefits of Brexit. <laughs> we're, we're just as likely to find uh, Augusta's yeah. So, um, waterfalls, um, stuck in the midden of poo. Uh, that was <laughs> Michael Rosen suggested that title, didn't he? Yeah. So, so you both like lyrics. Augusta, is it you, you? Do you actually teach the piano as well as performing? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so I teach piano and singing and and music theory. So lots of sort of one to one teaching in Hertfordshire. Yeah. Um, and I am very pleased to say that um, I've had at least two students who've written their own parodies as well. Really? So uh, <laughs> one one was the um, sort of exam GCSE fiasco um, sort of during during lockdown and COVID where they were all busy revising for their GCSEs. And then, no, nope, no, nope, we're not going to take them after all. So um, she wrote a uh, 12 days of, of revision. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm sort of um, teaching the new generation and uh, keeping them politically motivated as well. well. Good stuff, yeah. Okay, question for both of you. There's such a, a rich minefield of subjects that you can poke satirically and write parody things about. Is, is it a case of there being too many? You know, you, you, you're picking off yes. a select few. <laughs> Yes, I mean, well, I, I've got, I've got a whole, I've got a whole um, 
sort of notes on my on my tablet where I just have reams and reams of suggestions that come to me or suggestions that I have and there's only so many hours in the day so um, unfortunately it's quite a lot that never quite ever make it or they never quite get beyond the first sort of suggestion or or, uh, or a chorus although I think I think there's a reason why a lot of mine have got shorter and shorter because there just seems to be so many that the, the time it takes to do them it's often quite easier just to do one sort of short chorus and then see what happens tomorrow because uh, half the time there's another scandal brewing. <laughs> She had a time, lost her grip on power already. Those journos had their finest hour in five minutes. Local radio, worth a license fee alone. All is clear, the lady is gaga, totally cuckoo, persona non grata. So which someone will sack you? Place your bet. But Mike, are you musical at all? Is it just the lyrics for you? Is it Mike? I'm I'm not at all musical. Okay. I have no musical capability. Yeah. I have a a, a a very rough idea of the music theory, so I was able to put together the with Augusta's help actually the uh, the back <laughs> of the book. Um, but uh, now I'm uh, uh, I'm I concentrate on the lyrics. Okay, okay. Um, Augusta, question for you on your Twitter profile: well, What is long EBV? I have no idea um, at all what that is. Um, so EBV stands for the Epstein Barr virus. So when oh. I was eleven, I um, I I got a virus. I became ill. I was sort of really quite poorly for about three weeks. Um, went back to school at the end of the summer term, um, and I wasn't too well, but I sort of was back at school. It wasn't really until the following September when I went back to school then I realised I'm really not very well still. Um, and then Q probably, I don't know, maybe nine months, 10 months later, finally sort of getting referred. Um, and they still found the Epstein-Barr virus in my system. So had had glandular fever um, and all of my health problems as I've got quite a few few issues, they all stem from that. So it's having that ganja fever, Epstein-Barr virus never leaves you. Yeah. So around about 95% of the population actually have the virus inside them. Yeah. Most people doesn't cause any problems. Um, I, I sort of, I called it long EBV since COVID because yeah. um, there's a huge sort of population of people pre-COVID who ha like me have suffered from post-viral illnesses. The one mini silver lining of COVID is the fact that a lot of these sort of illnesses are are kind of coming to light and how much underfunded, under-researched. So chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, all these things. Um, and hopefully in a way, um, people suffering from long COVID are, we hope, going to get some better treatment and better things that will also help all these other sort of forgotten millions um, who have been suffering from sort of post-viral illnesses as well. Okay. Is, is there a vaccination for this available? Would you know? But EBV, no, no, no? Um, and and they're, I mean, they're finding more and more. So there's a within the last six months, I think there's a big study showing that um, a lot of multiple sclerosis sufferers, um, it is, it is, it's a lot of the um, kind of onset of that is is post having Epstein Barr virus. So a bit like you know, we really only seen the tip of the iceberg of what COVID is probably going to do to you know the millions of people have been infected because yeah. it's these things which have you know this long latency that that you know we don't know what's going to happen and we're only finding now some of the some of the diseases which which sort of get triggered by various viruses and, and obviously COVID is having a massive impact because so many people are um, being infected and reinfected. Yeah. Yeah. Augusta would it be fair to say that uh, your medical vulnerability Add some extra poignancy to the songs about Partygate. So yes, on. I mean all of this really came about. So I've, you know, normally in my, you know, pre-COVID times, I would be um, doing lots of performing, singing, um, accompanying, um, acting in shows. So we spoke about John Asher. So I played, I played a swallow in Wind of the Willows as he played Badger. Um, <laughs> so um, you know, my life was a mixture of teaching and performing, and that was, you know, that was kind of my my career path really. Um, obviously, lockdown came performing all stopped teaching all went online and then I just started I think it was November 2020 was my first parody and that came about sort of during that second lockdown and I started yeah I started dabbling with parodies and then particularly as sort of 
a lot of the world and the UK has opened up, but being medically vulnerable, mm. I'm still not doing very much at all. So I'm not doing socially things inside. Mm. Um, so I'm generally um, still not completely shielding, but shielding a lot. So the parodies keep coming out as my creative outlet. Mm. Um, and, and there's quite a lot of parodies to do with COVID. Um, and it is, it's lots of people who, um, you know, are feeling very vulnerable still. And the government are doing very little to educate or help mitigate. Officially, I know the American President Biden, he's been quoted, you know, we've defeated COVID, you know, as though it's gone, but it's still there. It's affected over, you know, a million people at the moment in the UK. Yeah, I mean, the rates at the moment um, are are stratospherically high Um, and, uh, and, you know, and and Biden, you know, very rightly got torn apart by a lot of the... Community across across the world, medical community, scientific community, saying, you know, this is this is almost going into one of the sort of worst periods that we've had because we've got very little mitigation and a lot of virus um, and lots of sort of waning immunity. So um, yes, it's uh, it's not it's not just political scandals in in the um, UK that we do cover some of the things in America as well. Particularly, um, I know that um, Mike has has done things with Trump as well. Oh, I've done the the. The Donald went down to Georgia, yeah. which is a title that's occurred to more than <laughs> more than one person at the same time. But uh, um, but uh, yeah, we've got that. But I mean that casual nature in Downing Street of the attitude mm. to the parties. I mean that's yeah. what uh, drove the title particularly, mm. um, which again was a <laughs> so that was a song that we both independently parodied. Yeah. Um, uh, and in our rel- so our styles are quite often like this. So Augusta did a short and sharp chorus. And I did, uh, you know, a longer one, um, mm. kind of telling the whole or telling a lot of the story. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's fair to say we're both, um, uh, in our ways, in our satirical ways, mm. furious at the lion from Downing Street, yeah. and that's, um, that, you know, that's that's uh, yeah. uh, illustrated on the cover, mm. um, even with the bottles kind of hiding out the. Um, you know, stay alert, the control of virus, yeah. save something. What is it? It's hidden by booze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's ongoing now, isn't it? You know, there's the scandal at first. It was denied. You know, all the rules were followed during number 10. And even now, the, there's an investigation. I think Boris was trying to put a halt to it or claiming legal costs towards it or something. But it, it's yes. going to go on. So, yeah, so um, he, I mean, he... He very obviously lied to the House yes. of Commons. You know, he said yeah. there were no parties. He said mm. the rules were followed at all times. Fine. Uh, he said after the Allegra Stratton thing, you know, I'm as furious as you are. Mm. Uh, and he'd been there all the time. Yeah. So he's lying through his teeth. It's perfectly obvious. And um, some of the things on the bottles are actually quotes from the Sue Gray report. Mm. You know, the prime minister was there drinking alcohol. Mm. Uh, the whole report is, uh, you know, is is there on the government website. Yeah. Um, and so clearly he lied to Parliament. Um, but they go about it in a systematic way and it will take uh, a while. Uh, and uh, yes, he got some advice from uh, some legal advice, which cost us all £130,000 because yep. he got David Panic, who is a QC, um, uh, sorry, KC now, mm. King's Council mm. in Blackstone Chambers. Um, colleague of my son's, actually. Oh. Um, but there we are. My son, my son uh, is a barrister who helped to bust the um, uh, Parliament prorogation. Oh, brilliant! Um, but, uh, yeah. Comes from the same 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 barrister chambers. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we we you know sort of a, a source of little insights hmm. on occasion. Yeah. Both are you collaborating on a new project at the moment? So what we probably reckon is that um, you know because this is this is the 2022 book. Yeah. Um, uh, we've both been writing um, and uh, you know in some cases doing videos since then. I mean, Augusta writes and makes the video straight away. Yeah. Um, uh, I did I did a um, Quasi's in the Sunlit Highlands uh, to the tune of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. <laughs> um, so it is still flowing. Mm. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, between us, I, you know, I would imagine we might well have enough for another book, which, you know, might be all trussed up and nowhere to go, mm. um, kind of uh, in a year's time, say. Um, September 2023. Okay. Um, there's, I mean, for for me, um, and I mean, as Augusta said, there's lots of things come to her. Um, for me, uh, I couldn't, um, uh, you know, tell you the speed at which they arrive. Mm. Um, an idea comes, and and generally, actually, then I write it very quickly. Mm. 
but uh, uh, you know, it's triggered by some event where you think, oh yes, that would work. Such yeah. as it's my party and I'll lie if I want to. Yeah, it's a brilliant title. Worth yeah. saying that although mine have all generally been par- sort of musical parodies, yeah. um, mine actually got sort of slightly more, um, so you've got a mixture of sort of sketches and poems mm. and sort of skits. Um, so it's sort of a, it's sort of, it's a, quite a diverse book when you sort of dip into it. Mm. Yeah, so I have I have a couple of characters that, uh, one of which came about from a song. So I have a Lord Tory Tory, um, <laughs> who you can guess his political opinions. Um, yeah. And there's uh, also rather closer to government, Mr. Curtis Lee Smug, yeah. <laughs> um, who uh, tells us sometimes about government policy. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's one or two adaptations of Monty Python. So there's World King Boris and the Quest for the Sacred Benefits of Brexit, um, and then sometimes just some other um, things that occur to me. So there's the the Brexit Human Impact Scale, yeah. a bit like yeah. the Beaufort Scale. Okay. And that's yeah, on the news. Oh, and um, for example a faux children's story which was boris bunker and the, and the variant factory yeah <laughs> is that you know i mean i've talked to um fans of his uh and uh, you know said look here's the here's the issue here's the problem with uh, with boris johnson and you know sometimes there is well this is a real response it's yes but he's got such a cheeky smile <sighs> so <laughs> there's a um I, I think a shrinking percentage actually yeah. that um had some affection for him. Yeah, I, I think, um, I think but, he, but he's fact, a crook. Yeah, well, the fact that he, people call him Boris, what other politician? Exactly. I, can't, I can't think of any at all. Like, you know, BBC reporters, they will they, when they say Boris, it's always your, he's your cuddly friend, and he's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think there was definitely something going on on sort of Twitter during all the kind of major scandals of saying, "Stop saying Boris, he's not yeah. your friend." Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I know that I used it quite a lot in my, um, because Boris is quite a good word to sing. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, I was very conscious, actually, in, in, in the book as well, but um, very conscious of when I was ever was tweeting it. And I would say Johnson, because I was like, you know, he is, you know, he's the, the he's the prime minister. He should be held to account. It's, you know, yeah. we can't give special dispensation because, oh, dear, he's made a couple of faux pas. You know, mm-hmm. this was life and death for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the persona is very powerful. Yeah, the, he's doing his best, mm. you know, mm. as if he's a child in nursery school. Yeah. Oh, dear. Again, look at your profile, Augusta. Um, you've got a brilliant compliment on there from Sarah Ali, the Banks on Piano. Banksy. Uh, Banksy, Banksy on Piano. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was that was a lovely thing that she said. She, she's, um, again, I sort of... Um, I sort of mentioned in this book that it's a lot of the the medical and scientific community, you know, I've got a big thanks to them because it was a lot of my original sort of COVID parodies that gave me a bigger voice that was amplified. And and she was sort of somebody who, um, um, she's a doctor who um, who sort of, we sort of crossed internet paths and um, and we become friends. And, uh, and that was something that she had um, sort of written underneath. So um, yes, it's sort of kind of very thankful for a lot of people um, who, uh, who, yeah, have been encouraged me. In the last two years, I'm really enjoyed seeing all the, the tweets that you put out, the songs, the performance. Oh, thank you. I think I think that's why the, the you know the QRs are quite good because I think um, yeah. you can read them and that's good. But I think there's a level of um, oh, well, hopefully, sort of performance mm. aspect of it, and also because a lot of this sort of interim, if there's a musical bit and yeah. I'm not singing, most of the time there's a lot you know there's a lot of asides that I put in with whether they're the sarcastic or or just completely factual um so um I think that just helps which when you're reading you probably don't quite get the flow of it in the same way yeah it's great interaction yeah. I mean, we aim, yeah I mean we aim to add the uh, the asides as recorded into the book but uh, yeah the video certainly uh, certainly brings it out and um uh, you know Augusta's fans have commented particularly they love the the witty asides <laughs> Uh, go look look at the, the the image behind you, Mike. Uh, you've got four other books that you've have been published. So the whole, yeah, um, very briefly, the whole the whole story started um, just before the referendum with Brexit and fantasy, yeah. and the book became Brexit's a trick, not a treat. Um, <laughs> if you hope for a Brexit that's sweet as a cake you can have and can eat, do you now realise the extent of the lies and that Brexit's a trick, not a treat? Because at that point, Brexit was going to happen on thirty yeah. first of October, supposedly. Yeah. Yeah, um, track, but it finished dog. with I Dreamed a Dream by David Cameron, and that turned into a full Brexit musical, mm. Brexit's musical trick. Um, and uh, we recorded this with John Asher, with Leon Berger, who's English National Opera, 
Zena Wigram, another brilliant soprano. Yeah. So, uh, and that has all the major tunes from Les Miserables adapted. So you have Boris Val, Boris, uh, Gauvert, Terraline, Arlene, um, for the rascally pub landlord Faragier, uh, the street urchin Corbosh, um, and uh, and in the end, Boris Val, Boris, and Cunnings dance around the stage with a song that finishes failure doesn't matter in the past which you know i mean i wrote this several years ago but it struck me you know kind of every month it strikes me that that's the the tory party approach uh, but anyway there was um uh, then the next year i don't beg pardon i'm talking bollocks from the rose garden Cummings, uh, yeah 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 i don't know if you know the um yeah. i beg your pardon song, oh, yeah yeah of course rose yeah, garden, yeah yeah 1960s okay um uh, and uh, that we we kind of well actually the Sunday Times said to me Mike are you writing a coronavirus musical yeah. so we we um it's not quite a musical in the same way but we decided there were kind of five acts to it um preparation expedition which is the Dominic Cummings bit prevention distraction and then congestion reflection and reward of the undeserving so um again there's 25 tracks we counted it as a a sort of five act musical yeah. uh and that's well oh apart from one compendium book because my youtube channel is britannia waves the rules so you want the whole the whole of the first three books together yeah. <laughs> you can get a bumper uh paperback if you're feeling generous for christmas hmm. um and uh that was that was where oh i did do one package of the whole lot yeah. which was called sovereign tea yeah. <laughs> um, so you've got a, an empty box called Sovereign Tea. So I don't think I have one handy here. But, but um, for £48.52, pence, you could get the three books and the two CDs. That's um, uh, or, or you could get them on USB, um, a little package with all the words. Uh, but yeah, that was that was it until, um, you know, then it's yeah. my party and I'll lie if I want to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the 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 kind of brand the, the the publishing name is View Delta, which is like you know a different view. So oh. you can find them all on Amazon if you search for View Delta. I was going to ask about the, the, is that have you self published using that name, the View Delta, or is this a traditional publisher? No, no, that's uh, that's me. That's my oh, self publishing. Okay, yeah, yeah got you. So, got you. Uh, I actually had a blog which was View Delta Blogspot, which mm. already, um, which I don't tend to use much now. I tend to do more videos, mm. um, but I'd created the name for that, and uh, I thought for the books, yeah, um, View Delta Press, mm. that will that will do. It looks, it's got the the quality of a traditional publisher. I know you see. Oh yes, you can. Uh, I mean, uh, I had a little bit more as it were, professional help with the first one. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, I'm now at the point where uh, this is entirely, you know, it's it's our work plus, yeah. you know, creation of the cover, an appropriate photo, yeah. just out in my hall there, again, some wood panelling, mm. um, but, you know, created the bottles. Mm. Uh, so you, you create the cover, yeah. you create the inside with a PDF yeah. and the QR codes, which, as I say, is that's a, that's a, a new piece. And um, mm. there you go, Amazon printed on demand. Uh, and we've even got um, so there's a little QR code at the end, uh, which is uh, for more from Augusta. So that goes you goes to a playlist. Um, so if you scan that one, yeah. you get to videos that are not even there in the book yet. You know that didn't exist when we published the book. Okay, well that's one of the beauties of print on demand. You can update it more or less immediately with the traditional publisher. You might wait a year or two before you can add any edits or. You know, any any typos that hadn't been originally spotted. Yeah, we did have one uh, very long session, um, uh, given that Augusta Shielding, then it was in my garden no. uh, and it finished about midnight yeah. going through yeah. proofreading. Uh, oh. So we, uh, uh, we, we we got pretty close with uh, with that. We did catch some afterwards, didn't we? Um, but uh, the 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 kind of cutoff point for this book is really the end of the Johnson prime ministership and the leadership contest. Yeah. So I think we'll save the Liz, the Liz Truss yeah. as Prime Minister songs, um, and depending on how long she lasts, Liz yeah. Truss and maybe the following one. Okay. But we'll yeah. save those for uh, for the next book. So we won't add more songs mm. into here. Um, but yes, if we find any typos, we can mm. fix them. Okay. In a way, would you be... How, how to put this? Would you be sorry to see the back of this Tory government because of the rich seam of satirical parodies that you can get from them 
I, I have several times um, you know, sort of mentioned in the foreword, you know, if you had a government that was uh, doing things right, proper due diligence, um, you know, doing everything by the book, mm. what scope would there be for parody? Yeah. So in the last six years, that's not been our position. True. That's not yeah, been true. the situation yeah. that we've been in. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, Augusto, how you feel about, uh, you know, suppose we had a proper government in. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'd, like like to, I'd like to see that. <laughs> yes. I mean, I quite like to um, go back to my normal performing and, um, <laughs> and maybe just poke fun at some more topical things that isn't always quite so depressing and quite so uh, conservative government related. Yeah. Um, I do. I do always sort of say that you know I'd be happy to 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 poke fun of, of you know more on the left or any other things. But the problem is most of the time they're you know they they're keeping mostly a clean sheet and um, and it's just one scandal after another yeah. from the conservatives. Um, but uh, but you know the odd one I can't I think um, oh well thing with the um, during the um, after the sort of between the, the Queen passing away and the and the funeral the, one of the songs I did was about the, uh, the hypocrisy of people saying about um, you know Harry and Meghan holding hands mm. um, so um, so you know that's that's one of the things that I've done more recently so things you know there will be things ripe for for parody beyond that um, but to be honest the the, the quite the sort of stream of excrement coming out i mean i think i i would quite like to have a bit of a break <laughs> really been since um brexit i was reading a, a journalist article about this today i think um that uh you know that started the uh, for though for those politicians who supported it without having a case for it that started the kind of ignoring of facts um mm -hmm. and um, uh, again, this has come to uh, fruition in a way with with Liz Truss coming yeah. from that stable. Yeah. Um, and you know, given that anybody of any capability was weeded out of the Conservative Party, um, uh, you know, at, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the the senior people that they had, the Dominic Greaves and so on, um, you're left with uh, people who will not look at the evidence um, and just maintain their own their own belief you know that um whatever that uh uh that cutting the top rate ta uh, tax will lead to growth <laughs> yeah. uh, and you know it's almost a kind of la 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 if anybody yeah. tries to uh tries to challenge it yeah, um, and crazy. That's the, yeah that's the, that's what we've had over the last six months i was in a public forum once and, and it wasn't particularly political um uh, it was at a christian conference and there's a civil servant there saying Oh, what we long for is a government that is interested in evidence. Mm. He said, you know, it used to be the case that governments would ask for evidence and we'd do the research and find the facts and take it to them yeah. and they'd listen and they might, you know, do kind of what was suggested by the evidence or they might not, yeah. but they listened. He said, that's just gone. Mm. That doesn't happen anymore. Mm. And I think that's that's probably the case really of, of of the wider world as well because i mean you've got you've got various kind of leaders in you know, thinking about um you know what's happened in brazil what's happened in america you know there's there's this sort of disintegration of facts and um you know experts is just you know it's just sound bites and um and you know sort of opinion with very very loose facts is, yeah i almost fell off my chair reading there's an article in the spectator that said uh, that you know is kind of pro Tory and pro Brexit, but it was saying um, we were given warnings that sort of politics might fall apart if we voted for Brexit. But you know, look what's happened. Various other countries have had populist governments. We haven't. And I thought, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've had Johnson and Truss. Uh, I wouldn't say the same about Theresa May, to be mm. fair. But we've had Johnson and Truss who just kind of uh, you know ignore the facts yeah. and declare their own reality. Um, uh, uh, to be fair, according to Dominic Grieve, I heard um, speak about this last week, he said Boris Johnson's a, a crook. He said Liz Truss, I don't think, is a crook. <laughs> she may be out of her depth. But, but then I think, I, think, I think what's dangerous about her, she's a puppet. Um, yes. So I think there's, there's, you know, at least something to say that, you know, Boris maybe knew some of his, you know, mis misdealings, but um, I, I find it more worrying sometimes to think just, you know, who is all pulling the strings because um, she does feel just a mouthpiece. It's quite scary, yeah, in we, fact. We do cover, 
Yeah. Um, you know, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak and the leadership yeah. contest in this. Yeah. Uh, well, in fact, even uh, well before the official contest, they were both obviously lining up for it, yeah. um, you know, and lining up for ejecting Johnson midterm. Yeah. Um, uh, Rishi Sunak registering his website and Liz Truss doing all the uh, Margaret Thatcher oh, costume yeah. play, uh, well, which fair. Augusta has sung about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We chatted briefly last night about maybe if you could come up with a little sort of parody or a little tune for well, this, this chat. So we look I did. Bat- Is my washing. Um, Is that right. Batman and Robin behind you? Yes, yes. And I had a hen, I do it with you, so I had a hen harrier on the other side. So that's <laughs> my kind of environmental um, background because um, kind of, if I'm not tweeting about politics, health, then um, it's about the environment and climate change. Okay. So <laughs> that's kind of my my uh, my, my go-tos. So, um, so yes, so I don't know whether you can, can you hear that all right? Yep, that was good. So... <laughs> So yeah, as I said, not not exactly the perfect um, perfect one because we are we are missing one. But it's the Green Hills, Chad Terry said it's our back. Got more from Steve McNeil for so sit yourself back as we've got a real treat in store. Brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. But for now, uh, Augusta and Mike, thank you very much. It's been I've absolutely enjoyed myself chatting with you both. Yes, thank you so much it's for inviting me. That's okay. Yeah, Let's thanks, keep Terry. in touch. Yeah. 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 And if you've got any questions, you know, just fire them at us. We'll do. Yeah. All right. For now, though, thank you. Brilliant. Take care.